Good Veterans Day morning, everybody. To all my fellow veterans out there, I want to wish you well, praying for you, and I hope you have a great day. Our topic from today.refrainmedia.com this morning is the King of Trees. And we're going to be reading Judges chapter 9, verses 7 through 20 from the English Standard Version of the Bible. So let's go. When it was told to Jotham, he went and stood up on top of Mount Gerizim and cried aloud and said to them, Listen to me, you leaders of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went out to anoint a king over them, and they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Shall I leave my abundance, by which gods and men are honored, and go hold sway over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Shall I leave my sweetness and my good fruit, and go hold sway over the trees? So the trees went to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I leave my wine that cheers God and men, and go hold sway over the trees? Then all the trees said to the bramble, You come reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointing me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let fire come out from the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if you acted in good faith and integrity when you made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Jeroboam in his house, and have done to him as his deeds deserve, for my father fought for you and risked his life and delivered you from the hand of Midadan. And you have risen up against my father's house this day and have killed his sons, seventy men on one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his female servant, king over the leaders of Shechem, because he is your relative. If you then have acted in good faith and integrity with Jerubbaal and his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the leaders of Shechem and Beth Milo, and let fire come out from the leaders of Shechem and from Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. So today's reading includes a parable in which trees are searching for a king. The parable emerges from a time of turmoil in the period of the judges in Israel. It comes as a stinging critique of people who seek a king for all the wrong reasons. Rather than seeking God's help and approval in finding a king, they sought to advance their own power and selfish ambitions. In the parable, the trees seek a king first from one of their own. An olive tree. The olive tree is too content producing olives and oil. The fig tree and grapevine similarly have productive lives serving a purpose. They see no reason to give up this in order to rule over others. In desperation, the trees turn to the thorn bush and say, Be our king. The thorn bush can't believe his luck. If these other fools don't want the job, he'll take it. His thorns and his brambles have always been despised, but now he'll show them. The thornbush king demands absolute loyalty and makes threats to those who are disloyal. Jotham, the parable teller, finishes by essentially saying, may you get the leadership that you deserve. Often we get the leadership we deserve rather than the good leadership we need, but through God's goodness we have Christ as our king, our needed savior. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. Let's pray. Lord, forgive us when we seek rulers who have more ambition than wisdom. And help us to take refuge in the king who hung on the cross for our salvation. Amen. First off, I'd like to say this devotion was written quite a while back. So it has nothing to do necessarily with the current state of the uh, presidential election in this country. However, there are parallels that can certainly be drawn from it, from no matter which side of the political spectrum you may be in. And I want to read this again. 
may you get the leadership you deserve. That's kind of a stinging phrase. May you get the leadership that you deserve. But let's look at it like this. If you are voting for someone based on your dislike of the other candidate, whether that be personal or whatever, then you're probably going to get what you deserve, which you probably isn't good. You should elect leaders. You should elect your, you should find your king, your leader, whatever you want to call them, based on their abilities, not because you dislike the other option so badly that you're going to pick this one. The lesser of two evils is still evil, most likely. Yeah. And a lot of and I know a lot of people in this and most every other election in my lifetime have said we've always picked the we're just picking the lesser of two evils. And that's of course also in the eye of the beholder. Why aren't we picking our leaders? Why aren't we voting? based on guidance from God. Why do we allow news media, social media, etc. to influence our thought to such a degree that we don't think independently anymore. We just repeat things we've heard on news shows. Or on Facebook posts we're not doing our own research we are just simply repeating buzzwords and catchphrases and I know a lot of people like well when I was in school we had to read the book 1984 I don't think it's required reading and I don't think it's been required reading in school for a long time in mo at least in most schools but if you've never read the book 1984, and I, I think they made a movie out of it as well. I'm not 100% sure on that. You need to read the book. And if they made a movie out, you need to watch the movie because we're actually living that. Um, even a lot of the, 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 the phrases used in that movie are used today in the same context. Um, another good book to read, Animal Farm. And... Both of these are very political books, and both of these are warning against um, the over, of giving too much power to the government and not keeping that power for yourself. And that's exactly what I mean. You give the power to the government. The government has zero power without you giving it to them. The Constitution doesn't give the federal government much power. Matter of fact, it gives it next to none. Through different amendments and through our continued uh, choice to re-elect the same people over and over again, the federal government has gained a lot of power, but it's really not based on the Constitution. So, what do we do about that? We look to God. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I know elections already passed, so it's too late this time anyway. I will never tell you who to vote for. I will tell you to seek God's wisdom. God's guidance and follow God's path for you when it comes to voting, choosing a leader, whether that be a political leader, a leader in your church, a leader in a tr church group, whatever the case may be. Follow God's direction. Don't follow popular opinion. Don't follow um, a Facebook post you read. Follow God's direction. You get God's direction from looking up to him and praying for it if you're trying to decide on a leader for your church or a, a church group or a church ministry then you should definitely be praying collectively uh, as a as a church body as not just the leaders of the church but a church body to find the right person for that role and that person should be selected based on their qualifications not on the fact that they asked for the job or they've been in the church the longest or they donate a lot of money 
in none of that. It's about qualifications and divine guidance from God. So, enough of that stuff. Again, I want to roll back to where I started this was, and that's thanking my fellow veterans for their service. That's what Veterans Day is about, is thanking veterans for their service. All living veterans. Memorial Day is a time where we remember those who um, are no longer with us, specifically those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Armed Forces Day, a couple months ago, that's where we honor those who are currently serving. So, I have the privilege of being in two of those groups. I was almost in the third, thankfully. God had other plans for me, because um, I am a veteran, and I'm also still in the military. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you again to my fellow veterans. May God bless you and yours. If you have any prayer requests or praise reports, please put them in the comments below, on Facebook, or you can send us privately to me via email, text, or phone call. And that information is in the description of this and every one of my devotion videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.